When I heard Battlefield 4 was going to feature a Chinese opposition, I was excited to say the least. Kung Fu, the multifunction shovel and the world's largest military force totaling 2,250,000 personnel. Finally, I thought, America may have met its match. I was both hideously naive and horribly wrong. Okay, you get the point. I don't expect America to be beaten by kung fu and multifunctional spades in all seriousness, but I do wonder if EA ever sits down and thinks about how these games come across to the international community. It's like they only have two tricks, Ura and Vlads. Russians and Americans are fine, but any foray into Asia from games developers is resulting in the following. Uh, generic Talhead terrorists, North Koreans without any nuance whatsoever, or in the case of EA's own Battlefield 4, a bunch of cannon fodder where seemingly none of the enemies are above the age of 14. I don't understand how they can make Russia so entertaining, but make no effort to use some of the fascinating hallmarks of China's army to the benefit of the narrative. And there are two things you should know about me. Battlefield 3's campaign was one of my favourite in the newly coined MMS genre. It beat any COD campaign and its Tom Clancy cinema style narrative was both engaging and well structured. People often argue that stories in MMF FPS don't matter or they don't exist. Just because you don't care about them doesn't mean they don't exist. I care about them but I don't care for this one. It was a lazy effort, no excuses. So what's the problem? Well as you probably expect, this is a 4 hour playthrough, at maximum. The single player marketing materials presented naval battles as some of the major scenes in the game. And whilst this is both true and fair, there's actually really nothing else. Aside from a few generic open country areas and a moment on a dam, most of Battlefield 4's campaign is truncated into what's seen in the trailer. They milk assets for all their worth and they gave me a sense that EA really didn't give a shit about the single player campaign anymore. I didn't feel like this straight away, however, with the first hour or so of the game living up to both Call of Duty and Medal of Honor's reputation. Explosions and a finely crafted on-rails experience paved the way for greatness. It had some, albeit limited, character, but all was going well. It soon becomes apparent as you 180 around the 50% mark that you're basically playing the game backwards. Start on a ship, head back to the ship, explode another ship, and you're done! Things go a little awry after long periods of zero exposition. All we really know is that China for some reason is going nuts, and General Chan is warmongering, I say in quotation marks. Alright, okay, uh, halfway through, Russia joins in. Okay, that's fine. Um, why though? Why is all this happening? The Valkyrie, Tombstone's home ship, has a Chinese VIP on board, and China wants him dead, I think. So, naturally, your team comprising of an African-American with the emotional development of a four-year-old and a Chinese-American intelligence operative and a guy who looks like a bug-eyed potato invade China. I also say that in quotation marks. The entire story is about a paragraph long, and whilst I'm sure that if the writers explained it to me in person, there'd be a lot more depth, I'm still turning around saying, fuck you, there was zero exposition, try harder. If I'm going to spend four to five hours of my life playing a video game, I need to know why. What am I fighting for? Immersion isn't about bloodstains around the screen. Tell me a story. That said, it had its moments. Frostbite 3 is demoed here much more successfully than in the multiplayer. Watching a ship split apart right in front of your eyes was jaw-dropping, and some of the scenes in China were beautiful. This might be a console port, and things do look a little chunky, but I can live with that for now if things continue looking this pretty. Visually, it's certainly a step up from the multiplayer component, which many of you will care more for.
There are other times when you're faced with gut-wrenching scenes of awkward human death. For instance, I watched a couple of guys drown when they were welded into a sinking ship. Although I had no decision making there, I felt more immersed and to blame than in other games which would have had me act a certain way. There was nothing I could do to change the game at that point, but I still felt some sense of guilt for even watching it. There are few and far between though, and for the most part EA have focused on wetting the panties of overly excitable Americans with their faux military chic attention to detail. Thank god there aren't any ridiculously gimmicky gadgets though, keeping this still a more grounded experience than Call of Duty. The curious thing here for me is that EA have clearly decided to try and get many of the multiplayer guys into the single player experience. Many of the missions remind me of Bad Company 2, they're not exactly open but they're more open than the previous campaign. You'll find yourself finding vehicles and driving around at will, which is different to the comparable parts in BF3 which were on rails to the point of the player having no control over the vehicle whatsoever. I didn't like this primarily because I hate the multiplayer matches with bots and that's what they were. Running around an open field blowing up modern tanks with an RPG broke immersion, and their attempt at willing in multiplayer guys seems futile, even if you're offering weapon unlocks along the way. They don't need to be the same, you already killed Medal of Honor, don't kill offline and online experiences too. Probably the best change to the Battlefield 4 campaign comes in the form of allowing the player to choose how he wants to play. The maps have many ammo and gadget boxes along the way, allowing you to pick any primary and secondary weapon and gadgets you want. This means you can genuinely play how you want, changing tactics throughout the campaign. There's even a rudimentary command mode allowing you to set your guys on the attack at certain points. Uh, bad company, yeah. Still, I'm not a fan of the more open, more generic maps, so none of them really worked for me. It felt like compromise, and something we believe in at PCG Media is that the finely tuned on-rails experiences is always preferable to a half assed open one. Battlefield 4's campaign is exactly that, half assed The issue is, it was so short that I don't regret my time with it. It had some awesome visceral moments, but 99% of those had no player control. The same can be said for Call of Duty, but at 5 hours long, at least Call of Duty campaigns are longer. But that's a bit like comparing the pros and cons of various forms of cancer. We're still at a point where the guys who made Metro Last Light have half the budget but all the talent, and I have to wonder if EA either A genuinely don't care about the campaign, or B are genuinely unable to make a good one. Let's see how Battlefield 5 fares when it's released in just a couple of months or something.